Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and oh hi everybody. What is going on? It is Gail Wright here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Don Machi Battle Chronicle video. And today, I'm going to be taking a look at the JP live stream that happened a couple of hours ago. I actually couldn't watch it live, as some of you guys may know. My family has come to the town, and as a result, I've been spending more time with them, and I actually haven't been able to watch any of the live streams, either the Don Mimo one or the Don Machi Battle Chronicle one at all. But, of course, now I'm able to take a look at what they've been talking about in the live stream. I do know that they didn't announce any sort of release date. Otherwise, I would have already found out about it through Twitter and as well Discord. So, of course, I was wrong in that prediction. There is no release date at all whatsoever in this live stream. But they did say in their tweet that they did go over some C uh, CBT information. Some of the closed beta test feedback now of course as somebody who took part in the closed beta test and you know gave precious feedback to them i'm hoping that a lot of what we said you know has been acknowledged by the team and is taken into account when preparing the final release of the game now of course if you guys want to enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more Don Machi and Don Machi Battle Chronicle content and of course let me know in the comment section down below after you watch this video do you guys think that they'll actually make any sort of changes down the line when the final release happens or do you guys think that what we got in the beta is what we're going to be getting in the final version of the game let me know I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say down below but yeah in this uh, live stream i think they had a couple of individuals uh, i'm gonna mute the stream because it's gonna be too loud otherwise actually i'll keep a little bit of a volume you guys probably won't be able to hear it in the video itself just in case you know copyrights and stuff like that you know these uh youtube uh, channels what they do is they kind of see if an audio and visual thing is matching and if it matches copyright claim so i'm gonna try and avoid that from happening we'll just have the visuals on screen of course in this live stream they had matsuoka bells va as well as sears va i don't remember sears va's name i do apologize on that sears is one of my favorite characters and i keep forgetting who who her va is um but let me have a look see one second sear va is sear flova's va is ishigami shizuka there you go so they had both of them during the live stream, which is really, really good. I mean, it's something that Don Mimo does anyways, right? If you go and watch Don Mimo's live streams, you can see that Finn's VA as well as Lafia's VAs are usually a part of the stream. Sometimes they bring in Haruhime's VA. Sometimes they've gotten other VAs as well. In the past, I remember they got Inori Minase, uh, Hestia's VA. They also got uh, uh, Sayori Hayami once. I remember when they were doing the whole Estrella record thing for the first time. They brought uh, Sayori Hayami in. And I think this is one thing I feel like the JP live streams do really well. And this is not just Don Machi's uh, live streams, but FCO does this really well and stuff like that. Is they bring on the VAs that are the main characters or very significant characters in the series to come on and help present the you know live streams. It's really really nice, and I love the fact that they have already adopted that from Don Mimo as well as FGO as well, where you bring on you know these popular VAs to help sell the game and promote the game. It's really really good, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing them do this in the future. I don't think they'll be able to bring back Matsuoka or Shizuka back again for consistently doing this on a weekly or every two week basis like how Don Mimo does but I do think in the future if they can bring on like two uh you know VAs that are willing to continuously help present this uh live stream I think I'll be very excited to see where they go from there all right let's go let's let's move on a little bit in the live stream of course uh the one thing that these JP live streams have is there's a lot of fluff and especially because this is the first ever live stream I'm not surprised that they're talking a lot in, in all honesty this is not surprising whatsoever um of course one more thing as well is that this stream was an hour and a half long I think uh once the game is kind of uh, you know released and it's continuously you know releasing updates and stuff expect the live streams to be around the one hour mark anything like down memo i would say somewhere around like down memo's length i would say um oh yeah so this is something that they did drop as well uh, uh what i'm gonna be doing as well is i'm gonna be taking basically screenshots and i'm gonna be sharing with you guys exactly what is uh you know being said on screen so in this situation if i'm not mistaken they said that there was going to be a uh yeah a giveaway uh they were going to be uh distributing a poster signed by both the vas basically it'll be for three people and it'll be a obviously random giveaway of course so that was something that was cool i mean this st sort of stuff is something that they normally do in these uh streams and stuff it's always very very cool and it's something that these games actually also do consistently if you go and check out uh you know don machi memoria freeze 
they always do this where they sign away posters like i think there is one for alan and otaro right now because of the hero festas which is really really cool uh, oh yeah so this is the poster really really nice poster i must admit so of course you've got shizuka's uh signature on the top left and matsuoka's in the top right i would love to get this poster in all honesty but unfortunately it's only available for those in japan technically you could still participate and get the poster but then you'd have to find somebody in japan who you can ship it to and then they'd ship it to you basically which is really lengthy and it's really costly um but yeah this is something that uh, is very very cool something i wish i got to be quite honest i really like the I really like the title screen for Danmachi Battle Chronicle, in all honesty. I really do like it. Hopefully, it evolves over time to, you know, introduce the anniversary and stuff like that. But as an initial main screen title, fantastic. I think it's really, really nice, for sure. It's one of those small things, you know, which you don't really pay too much attention to because you immediately click uh, tap to start and you go on forward. But having something like this is always very, very nice. All right, let's have a look, see ahead now. Uh, I'm going to move a bit ahead, Shizuka. I do apologize. Uh, let's see what this is. Ooh, what is this? I'm curious to see what this is. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of, like, small things, like uh, a letter from Amori Sensei, probably. Maybe, like, potentially something to do with uh, the story of the uh, series and... Uh, yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> this is exactly what I thought it was. So this seems to be basically a introduction to Danmachi as a series, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but I do think that's the case. So yeah, this is exactly what it is. So this is basically the story of like how, you know, Bell's story began basically. What What is the story of Danmachi? Because a lot of people might be new to the series, right? When you see that there is a new game coming out, especially on this channel, right? Team Caravan, which is Aiming Inc.'s challenge channel channel i was gonna say challenge channel who you know, where they only drop stuff like eminence in the shadow stuff and whatnot it's good to be able to you know share um share the screen uh, share the uh you know story of don machi i think it's fantastic for sure all right let's keep going along all right, let's see what they what else they have here. So, of course, they're talking. I think they're taking a lot of information from the stream as well. They're taking, like, chats from the stream as well and stuff. Uh, I assume, I wonder if this is them announcing the winner of the first, uh, the first winner of the lottery, which is nice. I think that's cool that they announced it. Hopefully, nobody bullies them. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, I don't even have the audio on. Why was I scared? I was worried that I was going to get copyright claimed again because uh, when I made my... Um, opening movie video right with Sanju, uh, Saju Nohana you know playing in the background of the opening movie I just got immediately copyright claimed so thankfully we don't have that going on for us because of course this trailer that they they were playing was of course a trailer we've seen a lot of times I don't think this is any different from the trailers we've seen already actually yeah no difference this is all trailers we've seen before it's literally featuring a lot of the information we've already had so we move along we move along let's see what else they have in store for us uh let's see what else they have in store for us um so this is, of course, the story mode. They're going over, like, uh, everything that happens in-game. Of course, we do know that they're going to go through the entire story of Danmachi, including Sororatoria. Funnily enough, of course, if you haven't watched my Data Mind video, we know this because of that. We know that Danmachi Season 1, 2, 3, 4 is going to happen. We knew already about that through the trailer, actually, anyways, because we had, of course, scenes from, you know, Season 3 going up against Astraeus. We had the Juggernaut fight as well from season four in the trailer but we actually didn't know about sword oratoria or the movie being a part of the series uh, being part of the game but thanks to the data mines we actually already know what happens you know in the game as well and what's going to be added to the game so that's at least very very good so let's skip ahead and see what else they have in store for us i'm very curious to see what else they have in store so they have the battle system here i'm very curious did they did they actually play the game on stream i'm very curious i actually haven't like i said i haven't been able to watch the stream at all right so i have absolutely no idea they are playing it okay <laughs> hey yo what is that iris count brother what is look at that iris count this is the first time i've seen any game have an iris count that's way larger than the actual like gold currency in the game bro 2.2 million iris for 1.3 million iris are you serious all right all right i see how it is i see how it is so obviously i'm gonna see if there are any sort of differences between this version of the game and the version we played in the beta test right and it doesn't seem like there's any difference, but I feel like, hmm. No, I think it's because there's a lot of UR scene cards as well as just a full out team. But I was about to say that the combat power feels like it's a lot higher than 
what it, it should be. I would open up the game and see for myself and trying to build something like this with level 18s and everything. But unfortunately, the beta test has ended, so I can't actually see it. But um, this is something that I would say is... It feels like it's they've increase the power level of all these characters a bit it feels like i could be wrong though i could be very well wrong and i could be just tripping big time i'm hallucinating and tripping big time so we move along i want to see how they handle this fight maybe maybe they know things that i don't <laughs> this is the reason why i actually want to watch this and actually see if uh you know maybe i was making things difficult for myself unnecessarily potentially right of course in this situation you know she's very overpowered in comparison but i want to see moves wise like what is happening here all right uh the movement is definitely very much the same i want to see one thing i'm actually looking at the uh, button here okay all right let's keep moving ahead i'm, I'm curious to see what happens ahead I want to see if there's input lag. That's the main thing. Because if there is input lag in their gameplay, then it's not a whole situation of where it's like server connections and stuff, which is what I presumed was the situation. But uh, I'm going to hope that it is actually... Okay, that's fine. I think it's fine, honestly. I think it genuinely is like because we're in the UK and EU. I'm in the UK and EU. We were experiencing a lot of input lag on my version of the game, of course, being able to try or me trying to connect from, you know, U Europe to Japan. It's a very different situation. Um, all right, let's keep going ahead now. And I want to see what happens ahead. Let's see if there's if they actually go up against like the Minotaur or something. Ooh, ooh, ooh they're doing something here. OK, Matsuoka is playing now. Oh, this is going to be good. Matsuoka trying to play. Okay, 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 okay. Let's let's dissect everything. So they're going up against the silverback. You can see that the power level is 30,000, which is actually a lot lower than I expected. Because the thing is, right, we have level 45s here. You can see that there's level 45, level 30, level 45, level 30, 45, 30. You have UR scene cards and SSR scene cards. Admittingly, the scene cards aren't leveled up. But I thought that with level 45s and 30s across the board, I would assume the combat power would be around... 40,000, 45,000, maybe. It's very interesting to see it that low, and it makes me a little bit more concerned, again, on the whole difficulty curve, right? With this Silverback event, which I assume is part of the story event, not the uh, heroic trial event or heroic tale event. Yeah, they don't show it, actually. But um, this is something that they, obviously, you, you the Silverback monster you face in both the story and the event. I assume this is the main story one. But even then, this will be easily beatable, for sure, 100% easily beatable. But the thing is, right, um, that story event is 13,000, and it's only the second chapter in Season 1. Once we get to Season 4, we're going to be in the 60s and 70,000s. And remember, this is only normal as well. Very hard is going to be much higher, so that's a bit concerning. This is the story event, because in the in, in the uh, in the event tale, not the, not the main story, there are two monsters and not just the silverback, so yeah. All right, let's see. Oh, okay. He's getting into the same trouble as I am. <laughs> Not being able to run away in time from the mob, but it's okay. All right, run away, run away. Okay. Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, I feel like it's so much more smoother on JP, man. I think it's, again, just a situation of, like, being on a different server, which is a damn shame. I really wish, um, of course, it was a lot more stable for our experience. So, okay, maybe one of our issues is already solved purely because well it was a server related issue which is understandable <laughs> i'm just listening to what they're saying and they're just screaming and whatnot of course when they get hit all right let's skip ahead and see uh, see what else happens so this is obviously pretty obvious and straightforward so i'm not really going to pay too much attention here um i think he's been able to do this very easily so let's move ahead and see what else they have in store for us, maybe. So, ooh, 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 ooh. One second, did I miss something on the way back? Let me just have a look, see. I'm, I'm very curious to see if I maybe missed something, potentially, you know? Trying to trying to be too cheeky and, uh, you know, skipping ahead. I might have missed something in terms of, like, maybe a pie chart or something along those lines. But I don't think so. So, let's just skip ahead, maybe. So, they're on the background right now is Aurario's Wall uh let's have a look see okay now okay they're back on uh in the arena okay let's read these slides let's read these slides what is it saying now what what, what are you telling me uh don machi battle chronicle what are you trying to tell me so 
of course, this is, I assume, a little bit of information about the CBT, but let's see. So, okay, so yeah, this is exactly, uh, this is the uh, implementation. This is the content that was available in the beta test, right? Um, for those of you who don't know uh, what was in the beta test, we had story up until the monster filia, basically. We had the battle royale game mode, and we also had the CBT limited event, the beginning of hero, the, the, the heroic tale. It was of the beginning of the heroic tale, which was obviously Bell's story up until the Minotaur fight. So this was all we had, which I mean, it's absolutely fine. It's very interesting that they said that this was a CBT limited event. I'm very curious to see if it will actually not be in the final version of the game. Um... Because if it isn't, maybe all my issues aren't actually a factor as well there. Because maybe um, the difficulty curve isn't as high potentially. Um, but let's see. Let's carry on and see what they have to say down below in the uh, in the vi live stream itself. Now, I wish I could actually understand Japanese audio uh, audioly. There's no closed captions available as well. So I can't really auto translate. But if there's anybody in the future, you know, for future live streams and stuff that is capable of, you know, translating this sort of stuff and everything. Uh, let us know in the comments. We might set up like a, maybe a Discord or something. Maybe the Reddit guys can organize a Discord or something where they go over all this information and stuff like that because it would be truly appreciated to get somebody who can understand these sort of things. I don't know if anybody in the Don Mimo team is interested in Battle Chronicle, hence why I didn't really want to ask them about it just yet. Um, but if they are willing to do it, it would be fantastic, of course. But yeah. Okay. Well, what is happening here? So this is uh, 3,000 players uh played the game i'm pretty sure we had the beta test going from the 30th to the third what is the 258 me uh meaning okay <laughs> okay i feel bad i i responded to the survey twice actually i did two surveys um so the fact that 3,000 participants were there and only 258 people responded to their survey is bad i think a lot more people should have responded and i'm i feel bad for them because obviously now they're gonna only be able to take information from 258 people now that 258 people may all have differing opinions, right? I might have a differing opinion from the JP players or the JP players might have a different uh, differing opinion to the NA players that were playing the game, right? Now, of course, from my understanding is that a lot of the JP players were in line and agreed with some of the stuff that I was talking about in my final impressions video. So fingers crossed that a lot of the survey responses were similar. Now, we'll have to wait and see, of course, but I feel this is really annoying because it feels like, you know, you've got 3000 players and sure, 10% of the player base or nearly 10% of the player base responded, which is arguably a lot better than expected because not many people actually go out of their way and do the feedback they just play the game you know vent their frustrations in discord and move on with life without filling any feedback form and some people of course think that feedback forms don't help but track record has proven from other gacha games and you know just generally speaking as well feedback forms are read they don't just ignore them Obviously, it also comes down to how they can implement those changes, right? That's the main thing as well. So the fact that only 10% responded is kind of annoying. I feel like at least if 25%, maybe 500 people of 3,000 actually responded, I think that would have been fine. I would have absolutely been fine. A less than 10% is really a little bit frustrating for sure. Um, I, I'm curious to see what they think about it. Were, were they hoping for more responses or are they okay with it or they were happy that most people were interested in it? Very curious to see. Okay. Now, this is interesting. This is obviously results from the feedback. Okay, I'm very curious to see what, what this is about. So they mentioned here that this is data up until the second. So maybe some people managed to get in there uh, li a little bits and bobs in uh, later on. But yeah. All right. So uh, question one, overall evaluation, 7.2% said it wasn't very interesting. 4% said it wasn't fun. 40.6% said it was fun. I was in that category, basically. It was fun. I love this game, and I love this game is 48.2%. Now, the thing is, right, I I can understand why a lot of people love the game for sure, but I think it was definitely, it was fun range, because there are a lot of issues that, if fixed, will make me go into that I love this game category. But right now, with, the, with those issues and everything, I love the presentation. I love the fact that we're able to use 3D models in a Don Machi game. Finally, after like seven to eight years of the series being live with uh, media like anime and manga and stuff like that. Of course, the light novels have been 10 years old now. But when it comes to actual media, you know, it's we've never had a Don Machi game with 3D models, proper 3D models. So obviously it'll be fun, but there are places it can improve drastically. Whether or not you want to play after the official service begins, 3.6% said I don't want to play. 
Uh, 6% said I don't want to play too much. 63.5% said they want to play. And 26.9% said I love this game so much I definitely want to play. Um, I think this is absolutely right. This is exactly the way I was expecting this one to be the overall evaluation. And I think that, you know, it says a lot as well at the same time that only uh, it was 64.64% uh, nearly the majority of the players that just said, I'll play, but I'm not like, oh, I love this game or anything. So that adds a lot more to the sort of feedback and stuff like that. So very interesting. Very, very interesting. Let's let's get carry on and see what else they have to say. So this is obviously talking about the gameplay and everything. So it, I assume it talks about like the CG quality and stuff like that. And uh, as a result, right, um, if we move to Japanese over here, perfect. Um, yeah. Okay, beautiful. Representative opinions about the game. So this is just general uh, opinions about the game. Um, it seems very positive, but okay. Um, it was interesting that the story of the anime was faithfully reproduced in the story direction. I agree with that. I think that was great that they managed to use the 3D CG models, which they talk about being said it's very well made. I agree. I think for a mobile game, especially knowing the budget of this game not being too high, potentially... I think it's absolutely well done. I was so satisfied that I couldn't think of it as free. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but okay. I'm looking forward to being able to be excited with many players. That is true. I do think that would be fantastic being able to play with other players, especially Battle Royale game mode or even when they do introduce the raid boss mode. I think it'll be so much fun for sure. It is a game that Danmachi lore is, love is transmitted very much. I think in, in terms of the character models as well as some of the other stuff like the scene cards and stuff, absolutely. But I think there are ways they can even enhance that even more through things like the events having stories and the tales having stories and stuff like that. Small things will just make it even more of a Danmachi game, which would be amazing. Um, of course, I'm trying to also impose a lot of what Danmimo does really well into Danmachi Battle Chronicle, but that's because, in my personal opinion, Battle Chronicle would be amazing if it implements the stories and lore and stuff like that from Danmimo. And of course, the casual aspect as well, I would say. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's move on ahead and see what else they have to say. So this is obviously stuff that they've already mentioned. Um, okay, let's move on ahead. So wait a second. It seems like they have another pie chart here. I didn't notice here. Okay. So this is another uh, pie chart. I think it's for the battle royale game mode um, because I think they just uh, said a they just were about to say battle and then I just cut them off by muting them. But let's see. This is I assume the battle royale mode. Yeah, it has to be the battle royale mode. Um, or it, it or it is the battle system. One second. Let me listen to them. I think, no, it's just the battle mode. Okay, it's just how the battles are. It was fun, 31.4%, 7.5%, it wasn't fun. Uh, and 14.1% uh, said it wasn't very interesting. It's very interesting to see that a lot more people were swaying towards the negative now from the overall evaluation because the... Uh, the uh it wasn't fun and the i love this game and i love this uh system is the same as pretty much the first one the overall evaluation one but a lot of people who said that you know the game was fun overall started to t lean towards it wasn't very interesting and 14.1 percent i think it's down to also like i said i think a lot of the international players kind of suffered a little bit due to the input lag situation and everything right um but i do think that uh you know based on what i saw matsuoka play uh a couple of minutes ago i think it's going to be just fine i think it'll be just fine um i think obviously they'll need to clean it up a little bit maybe add a couple of more uh dimensions to the thing such as like uh iframes and you know being able to to time your skills perfectly to dodge an attack or something something like that i think stuff like that will probably help the battle system more than anything else um all right so the, let's switch to japanese please once again do i have water in my okay I, i'm sorry if that i'm having to drink water during a recording but there's just so much to talk about right um so typical opinions about the battle mode it was really realistic to be able to explore the dungeon i think that's great i think that's uh, a good thing this game is a great game but it's a great game uh okay bit weird i love this game and i love it so much i love it so much i love it so much okay i want to display the clear time after clearing i want to compete with others in time attack that's actually a good shout i would love to see that happen it's something that dokkan actually does in their record system i think that would be something cool there was a scene out where i felt it was difficult to manipulate the character yes let's go i felt the ba boss's uh, omochi activation time was act uh, fast and it was difficult to make guard break yes 
thank you. At least people had negative opinions here. Bro, I was about to say, if people are just going to have a positive opinions here, what is my feedback? Where is my feedback? But this is some stuff I already had to say and agree with, um, especially the last two things. So hopefully they take that into account. But I, 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 lo I love the fact that they mentioned this as an idea. This is an idea. The display clear time one is fantastic. Absolutely brilliant idea. Absolutely agree. All right, let's let's keep moving ahead. Oh man, this is gonna be a longer video, by the way. I I know I'm it's I'm already 25 minutes in, and I'm saying it's gonna be a longer video. But there's so much details to go through. We're only at 52 minutes of the live stream, and I'm 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 still skipping through the live stream, of course, right? Um, so let's see if there's any more maybe information about uh, some of the other game modes and stuff because of course we have the battle royale mode obviously to go through um, in the questionnaire. I know that we have to talk about the heroic tale event as well. So hopefully they do uh, talk about it later on. So let's uh, skim ahead, maybe. Let's see. Oh, there is one. Okay, perfect. Another pie chart. I love me my pie chart, so I'll take it. Um, all right. So there is this. Okay, let's let's translate it and see what they have to say here. Um, so yeah, I think this is really well done so far. I must admit, I'm I was kind of unsure exactly how they would uh, talk about the, um, you know, how they would talk about the. Uh, battle royale modes and stuff or and you know how they would handle the feedback in this live stream but they've actually taken a lot of the information it seems and appropriately placed it well so uh, this is the uh battle royale game mode it seems like let me switch it to japanese because then it'll probably translate it a little bit better so 20 percent said very dissatisfied 25 percent said somewhat dissatisfied 38 percent said it was fun 16.5 percent said it was very interesting wow okay i mean personally i think it was fun i think it was fun i get why people might be a bit dissatisfied and everything because it was challenging and especially when you're trying to connect with players across countries and stuff and i think that's something that might have come to play a little bit right me connecting to a japanese player a japanese player trying to connect to me i think there were a lot of issues like that i saw some people just straight up lagging out as well i saw like level zero uh, or zero fauna uh, characters just hanging about if they remove them make the server smoother and of course once they are able to release a global server as well where you know the global players can play on their own server and the jp players can play on their own server i think it'll be absolutely fine but i do think it was fun i i have to i disagree with a lot of people here i think i think it was fun i'm with i'm with the 38 point uh, percent i think it was fun it wasn't amazing for sure right i wouldn't say it's very amazing because i don't like pvp and gacha games because it just ends up becoming a whale fest right but i also don't think it was really bad to the point where i was like why does why does this mode have to exist kind of thing i think it was a cool concept it's a very rare concept i feel like not, not i've never seen a i feel like i've never seen a battle royale game mode in a gacha game outside of uh dragalia actually dragalia had it actually I, I remember dragalia having it so that was cool um but yeah otherwise it's very rare okay uh representative opinions on the ba battle for the magic stone so this is battle for fauna uh, battle royale it's nice to have a PO place to compete with other people eight person battle royale was interesting it was difficult to match and the waiting time was long that is true that that was a little bit of an issue but i think that was just the lack of players there was a level difference with the opponent and it ended without doing anything i think that's the thing as well right is i wish it was just standardized i think if it was like okay if as long as you have the unit right you don't have to level up the unit or anything as long as you have the unit and the scene cards just come in and we'll max it out full dupes full everything full skill levels and everything go in and have fun i think that would be great I didn't understand the rules well. The final result of the match result will be hidden by default for the opponent's result. I want you to be able to confirm if you press the button. Small quality of life stuff. Again, I think this closed beta test gave insight to a lot of QOL stuff that they should implement in the game. 100%. There's a lot of QOL stuff that they should implement in the game and they'll have to do it inevitably. They will have to do it inevitably. Again, I wish I could listen to their responses on what they think about this and what their thoughts are. Um, of course, if you do understand Japanese, like I said, and you want to let me know about what they said, leave it in the comment section down be below because it'll help us out tremendously, honestly. All right. So this is the event, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, this is them talking about the event. So let's see. Yeah, CBT limited event. All right, let's see. I'm very curious to see what people have to say about this because I know a lot of people struggled with the event, but it seems like a lot of people are happy with it. Wow. Okay. 
I was on the side of I hated it. I did not like it at all because of some a lot of issues, the difficulty curve as well as the um, lack of story. Mm, okay, 17.3% said they were somewhat dissatisfied. 5.5 said very dissatisfied. 26 said it was very interesting. 51 said it was foreign. Ah, I heard them say it's story. This is my problem. This was my problem. This is something that I requested. There needed to be story in it. Let me see. Let me see. Please tell me that they said it was uh, linked to this. Okay. All right. Other games were very interesting because there were no CB2 only events. Okay, interesting. It was fun in uh, the battle that can be super incandescent. The sense of accomplishment when I was able to defeat uh, it with high was a high difficulty was a miss. It was a sense of accomplishment that coincided with Bell's feat of defeating the Minotaur. I felt that I wanted to prepare an easier difficulty. The enemy is too, too strong to defeat. I felt unsatisfactory because there was no story. <laughs> the opinions and the pie chart are so different, by the way. The pie chart says, yeah, it was good. It was very interesting and stuff like that. And then the complaints are, it was too difficult. I, I didn't like it. There was no story. Stuff like that. I do agree with this, though. I do agree with the last three points, basically. I do agree that there is a sense of accomplishment for sure as well right but i do think that they could also make it a little bit easier in the sense of at least normal and hard shouldn't be impossible for the average player to complete very hard sure i can give you that maybe the last stage of very hard maybe impossible to defeat without like the latest and greatest units or something like that but even then i would be very annoyed with it because i think that that, that events particularly these uh, limited events right they should be accessible and clearable by all players just like dan mimo maybe make it a little bit more challenging than dan mimo but don't make it next to impossible for players to complete you know that's something i would say is something that they need to definitely work on but at least they've acknowledged it again brilliant that they've actually been able to listen to the feedback um so let's move along and see what they uh, what else they have to say. So this is something else actually as well. I'm very curious. So I assume this is uh, details or, or no? Wait, 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 wait. No, no. I just read what it is. It's the exact same thing. I just uh, I, I just uh, jumped the gun there. That's my bad. Because I think I assume they're gonna probably go over the. Uh, general comments that we had about the game as well as what we wanted to see in the future now there are some things that i personally mentioned stuff like uh small things like basically changing your home screen um uh, maybe changing the gotcha rates a little bit to make it a little bit easier potentially um stuff like that i i basically asked for stuff like that so hopefully they did acknowledge it so let's move ahead and see if they did talk about it okay this is this is probably it this is probably it so let's have a look see uh yeah there we go go there we go all right also you guys saw my uh channel i'm gonna have to blur that out so let's uh do this japanese all right what do we have here um i look forward to interacting with seasonal events and recommend characters i love this game if you put a character that is entangled in the party you want a special production i want that observation mode of the character yeah i think i agree with that sort of stuff i would love to see that sort of thing as well i don't disagree with that i think that's absolutely fine to see as well um uh, this is something that they have to change, please, because I cannot go out in public like this. Please uh, ch change it to, like, uh, Ryu or Eyes or anybody else, maybe. I wouldn't mind. Maybe more clothed as well. <laughs> that, that would be fine as well. All right, let's see. Let's see what else they have in store for us. Did they talk about anything else? Uh, doesn't seem like it. I think right now they're going to go into a fluff piece. Let's see. Let's see what this is. One second. What does this say? Let's see. Japanese. There we go. In in Danmachi Battle Chronicle, you can party with it. You can. Oh, this is the familiar. Oh. Wait. What is this? Oh, 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 this is just a game they're having. Okay, I just was like, man. I was so confused. I was like, huh? W what's happening here? I thought this was a new game mode that they had, but this seems to be basically just uh, them uh, having a little bit of a game basically between themselves on like who they would have as a familiar member and stuff like that. So they're obviously Matsuoka and uh, Shizuka are basically going through their familiar members and uh, basically drafting. It's a draft challenge. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know what? That might be actually a little bit of fun to do, you know, making a draft challenge against other Danmachi Memoria Freeze players in the future. Maybe we could do something like that on live stream. Let me know if you guys would be interested in that. 
Okay, what is this? Is this another live stream maybe? Please? Please be another live stream? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Because we're almost at the end of the stream. Maybe we're almost at the end of the stream. Uh, ooh, knee pillows. Okay. M more gifts. I like, I like. I like the fact that they're giving so much to pl the players, right? It, it, It's basically a way of promotion, basically. Marketing. Good marketing here. Very, very good marketing here. Uh, okay, this is them talking about the selling of the light novels. Okay, so this is pretty much straightforward. This is nothing new, basically. So what this is, right, is them basically, um going over um all the media and merchandise of don machi and the series of don machi so this is pretty much all we had for uh what it seems to be the um live stream it doesn't seem like they, they made any announcements for any future live streams or anything um let me have a look at the end of the stream maybe they announced something here no okay so I'm going to assume that there is going to be another live stream next week. We'll have to wait and see until they announce it on their t uh, Twitter, which we can actually go and check maybe. Uh, Don Machi Battle. Uh, le let me just do D Don Machi. Don Machi Don Tro. Uh, let's see. Did they announce anything here? So this is, of course, uh, the uh, main thing. This is, of course, them uh, signing the poster and everything. Nothing here. Okay. So they've not announced anything so far yet, but... We have at least gotten some information from the feedbacks. Overall, I think they've taken a good amount of feedback and they've addressed some of the things I had issues with. Of course, I would prefer if they had a little bit more information about the uh, you know feedback from the beta test. And of course, potentially a release date would have been nice. But I'll take what, uh, what we have here and I'll definitely take what we've gotten because I think, you know, with uh, all things said and done, they've definitely at least taken feedback that uh, we have had for them you know in terms of stuff like the difficulty curve the um you know the challenge of no story in the tales stuff like that things like that are being uh, acknowledged and addressed on live stream is very very good so i'm very curious to see what they have to say in the future let me know what you guys think of course of the uh, live stream that they've done today hopefully i could uh, let you guys know about everything that they announced today and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did remember to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys next time take it easy everybody Bye bye